Pigeons have... <laughs> Hi! Pigeons have developed a noticeably... <laughs> Pigeons have developed a noticeably bad reputation over the years. A reputation that affects the way that they live. A lot of the negative beliefs people have about pigeons are based on half-truths and just straight up myths. Today, we're gonna to be debunking some of those myths and shedding some light on the truth about pigeons. So if you clicked this video not really liking pigeons, hopefully by the end of today, you'll have changed your mind at least a little bit. By the way, say hi to Kettle, she's joining us today. Anyway, let's start debunking some myths. The first myth we're gonna debunk is by far the most popular, and that is that pigeons are inherently dirty. If you've ever been to an urban city, you've probably seen a less than glamorous looking pigeon. I myself have seen many greasy, dirty, really bad looking pigeons. Downtown Chicago does these birds dirty. That wasn't an intentional pun, by the way. While there are a lot of dirty pigeons out there, it's not due to their species. It's due to their environment. If kettle is any indication, pigeons can actually be quite beautiful. You do agree kettle is beautiful, right? When you see a pigeon in the city and you find it unappealing, you should take into consideration what their life-sustaining resources are. Kettle may have a clean basin of water to clean herself in 24-7, but city pigeons often confuse oil spills for a good place to clean up. Kettle doesn't have to worry about pollution and snaring her, but there are pigeons downtown that are at constant risk of losing their limbs. I've seen way too many birds downtown that are missing toes or entire feet. All to say, Kettle has a very comfortable life compared to most pigeons. She has a clean home, clean water, and a balanced diet of seed and grit. And the balanced diet is more key than you might think. A pigeon's diet in the city is a huge contributor to their dirtiness. Pigeons in the city have a very limited diet, mostly consisting of food that is left behind by humans. It should be no surprise that what these birds eat affects their poop. In fact, their diet affects their poop so much that it completely changes the texture and color of what their droppings usually look like. She dropped a feather. A healthy bird like Kettle will have droppings that take the form of a small sphere. Sphere? Sphere? You know what I'm trying to say. It's a little circle. And the colors of those spheres will vary based on the pigeon's diet and preferences. This may all come as a surprise to people who are only familiar with city pigeons. City pigeons poop is white and runny and really gross. And again, their poop is only like this because they're malnourished. And unfortunately, this byproduct <laughs> and unfortunately, this consequence of pigeons' malnourishment directly contributes to their bad reputation. Often, pigeons are blamed for the unsightly appearances of cities, but really, cities are really <laughs> cities are really to blame for the unsightly appearances of pigeons. A myth that is connected to pigeons' dirtiness is the idea that they are all dangerous and diseased. Hi, Kettle. <laughs> of course, pigeons can get sick, just like any other animal and any person. However, pigeons are not inherently diseased, and they're definitely not dangerous. With bird-related illnesses, the creatures that are most at risk are other birds. This is especially true because most birds, including pigeons, live in flocks. Imagine you live with a big family, and one of the members of that family gets sick. How unlikely is it that another member of the family gets sick? What I'm trying to say is the spread of disease from bird to bird is not exclusive to pigeons. It happens to basically any animal that travels in groups, including humans. Even with the increased frequency that pigeons and humans interact compared to other birds, it's very unlikely that you'll get sick from a pigeon. Most people who do get sick from a pigeon get sick from their droppings. This can be from droppings becoming airborne or being in direct contact with your eyes, nose, or mouth. Again though, this is not exclusive to pigeons. The same exact diseases can be caught from parrot droppings. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any kind of animal poop is good to intimately interact with. <laughs> pigeons are dumb. I know I always joke about how dumb Kettle is, but the truth is that pigeons are pretty intelligent. Pigeons have been studied for their intelligence on multiple occasions. So let's go over a few things that show off how smart they are. I'm gonna keep this pretty brief because in the future, I'd like to make a more detailed video about pigeon intelligence. The first notable feat of pigeons is their ability to differentiate between human faces. This is actually a trait that I can point out in Kettle. She's able to pick me out of a crowd even if my hair, clothes, and just like general appearance are warped. She also seems to be able to differentiate between me and my family members who bear an obvious resemblance to me. In the same way that crows can remember who is nice to them and who is mean to them, pigeons also can remember what people are like. Do you feed pigeons at your local park? Well, there's a good chance that they remember you and they might even be able to recognize you by the sound of your voice. Pigeons are also capable of long-term memories, meaning that they can still remember you even if you've had a long absence. And I just think that's really sweet. There's a 
common misconception that pigeons are completely wild birds. Ah, bye bye. There is a common misconception that pigeons are completely wild birds. Hi. Pigeons, like chickens, are actually domesticated birds. Pigeons have been bred for various purposes, like sending messages, racing, and for being showbirds. Most people are familiar with the term homing pigeon, but a lot less people are familiar with the term rock dove. And like their name suggests, they lived on rocky cliffs. Most pigeons don't have rocky cliffs to call home in the middle of the city, but large, giant, huge buildings work just fine. Most, if not all, of the pigeons you see in city areas are domesticated birds. Do you wear clothes? Do you like birds? If you answered yes to one or both of these questions, you might be interested in today's sponsor, Bird Collective. Bird Collective is a brand that sells clothing and accessories for bird lovers. You can get all sorts of things from Bird Collective, from hats, to shirts, to bags. She's very singy today. <laughs> They've got something for just about everybody. They're offering a discount for my followers so that you guys can get some bird drip at a reduced price. You can find my sponsored link to the Bird Collective website in my link tree, and that's also where you'll find the coupon code. If you do decide to buy something, you'll be supporting me as a creator because I get a commission from each sale. You'll also be supporting birds because Bird Collective donates proceeds towards bird aid organizations. You can find a detailed list of where these donations are going on their website. I'm a genuine fan of Bird Collective. In fact, for the majority of this video, I've been wearing a Bird Collective shirt. Being a fan makes it that much cooler to be sponsored by them. Hi! Anyways, thank you so much to Bird Collective for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the myths. There's a lot of people that believe all pigeons look the same, but this simply isn't true. Related to pigeon domestication, like we just talked about, is the fact that there's a variety of pigeon breeds. Variety is honestly an understatement. You would not believe how many types of pigeons there are. I'm willing to bet that you're familiar with pigeons that look like kettle, or even maybe a white pigeon, but I kind of doubt you're familiar with fantail pigeons, or frillback pigeons, or whatever this is. The point is, there are a lot of pigeon breeds out there. Unfortunately, not all of these breeds were designed ethically or with the pigeon's well-being in mind. You know how there are some dog breeds that have inherent issues within that breed? Yeah. That acknowledged, it's always fun for me to see people's faces when I show them these strange pigeons. Too bad I can't see your face, as far as you know. Thank you, Kettle. You're so good at singing. True. A lot of people have the misunderstanding that pigeons and parrots require the same kind of care because they're both birds. You might be surprised how different birds can really be from species to species and breed to breed. Hi. Even among pigeons, each animal's care needs can be vastly different. Pigeons and parrots have completely different needs when it comes to diet, reproductive care, and their environment. In another video, I'll go into the detailed differences between parrots and pigeons, but for now, Let's keep it brief. Like I said, pigeon... Thank you. Like I said, pigeons and parrots have completely different dietary needs. Pigeons usually have a seed-based diet, while parrots usually need a little bit more fruits and vegetables. Pigeons need enclosures with walking room. They require an enclosure that allows them to walk along the ground. This isn't provided by most parrot cages, which have more vertical space than horizontal. Pigeons also have completely different needs from parrots as far as reproductive care goes. Pigeons are more comparable to chickens in that sense than they are to parrots. Parrots have certain procedures that are important to their reproductive health. Procedures that I'm not going to talk about in this video because we would be here for a while. But pigeons don't necessarily benefit from all of these procedures. Things that work for parrots are not necessarily going to work for pigeons. That's why it's really important to know the needs of your specific animal. Animal. Again, I'll probably go into this topic deeper in another video, so keep an eye out for that. You can also leave a comment of other video topics you'd like to see from me. Those are all the myths that we're going to be debunking today. If you know of any other pigeon myths, leave them in the comments below and I might include it in my next video. I have a Patreon where I post behind the scenes content daily, and I also have social media that I post on daily. The link to all of that will be in my description, and it's also in my link tree that is also in my description. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye!